We begin with confession and forgiveness and the blessing of the palms. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed the Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that, joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus enters Jerusalem as the king promised in prophecy and is hailed by the crowds. Within days, the shouts of praise would turn to shouts of rejection and condemnation. The Holy Gospel according to Mark in the 11th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you. And immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found the colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ.
We continue with the prayer of the day. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray together the prayer of the day. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You are invited to prepare your hearts and minds for the scripture readings, the sermon, and the hymn of the day. Welcome. This week, the center of the church's year is one of striking contrasts. Jesus rides into Jerusalem, surrounded by shouts of glory, only to be left alone to die on the cross, abandoned by even his closest friends. Mark's Gospel presents Jesus in his complete human vulnerability. Agitated, grieved, scared, forsaken, Though we lament Christ's suffering and all human suffering, we also expect God's salvation. In the wine and bread, Jesus promises that his death will mark a new covenant with all people. We enter this Holy Week thirsty for the completion of God's astonishing work. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 50. Introduction to the lesson. The image of the servant of God is one of the notable motives in the book of Isaiah. Today's reading describes the mission of the servant whom early Christians associated with Jesus. Like Jesus, the servant does not strike back at his detractors, but trusts in God's steadfast love. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2. Introduction to the lesson. Christ did not act to attain status and glory, but was obedient to God even to the point of death. Following Christ's example, we do not seek personal status or glory, but care for others as God cared for us in Christ's death. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
The Passion Story in Mark's Gospel presents Jesus as one who dies abandoned by all. He shows himself to be the true Son of God by giving his life for those who have forsaken him. The Holy Gospel according to Mark in the 14th and 15th chapters. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some who were there said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you will always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, Wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priest in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread in the bowl, into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, 
Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, be, uh, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, 
I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each would, should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. 
These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome, everyone, once again to our service of the word for this special occasion for Palm Sunday and Sunday of the Passion, the beginning of Holy Week, and is now my privilege and opportunity to share with you a message that's based on this special occasion. Our service, of course, began with the blessing of the palms, and it, uh, we heard again of Jesus entering into Jerusalem uh, in triumph being acclaimed by the crowds and the waving of branches and the uh, spreading of garments before him to prepare his way. And then we heard uh, the passion reading, the long description of those final hours and, and, and moments of the life and ministry of Jesus before and leading up to his crucifixion. And so we saw the crowds being both uh, in praise of Jesus and, and shouting his, his praise and, and his acclaim, and then also turning on him and shouting for him to be crucified. We saw Jesus entering Jerusalem and so many who were there expected him to take up the throne of David and to be proclaimed king of Israel and to be uh, given a crown of jewels and, and precious metal. And then we saw Jesus enthroned on the cross and given a crown of, of thorns. We saw the disciples of Jesus following his commands and preparing his way, and then we saw the disciples of Jesus denying him and abandoning him and betraying him. We saw all these things once again, and we heard the story, and every time I hear the Passion reading, there's always a part of me, as we get to the point where Jesus is on trial, and we know that all he would have to say was the right thing. And Pilate would let him go free. And he would take up his throne. He would kick out the Romans. And he would, he would live. He would survive. He would win. At least according to our human perception and the ways of the world. But I think the heart of this day, the heart of this particular Sunday, is best captured not with the gospel lesson for Palm Sunday, not with the passion reading from Mark, but the words that make up our second reading. Paul's letter to the church in Philippi in which in the second chapter he quotes an ancient Christian hymn about Jesus, a poem or a creed 
but something that, that stands out amongst the rest of his writing is, is being poetic. It is so powerful. Of course, it begins with, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Though he was equal with God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave or a servant, and so on. Those words, the description of Jesus, even though he was God, emptying himself of his godly privilege so that he could suffer for us is so heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time. Jesus gave it all up for us. He gave up his power. He gave up his privilege. He gave up his royalty. He gave up all the rights that he had and instead became nothing. Became a servant. Became a slave. No rights not even to life itself. And thus he died. But as the poem or the hymn goes on, it reminds us that death did not end the story of Jesus. But because he died, not for himself, but for us, God also highly exalted him and raised him up and brought him forth as a new creation. This is what gives God the right to be with us in the darkest, worst moments of our lives because we have a God that knows what it's like to die. God died for us. Jesus died for us. And how can God die? That's the, the great mystery of what this day brings us. And as we continue on through Holy Week and go to Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday in particular, we continue to wrestle with this mystery. How is it that the eternal God of life knows personally what it is to die? So people of God, this is the pattern Jesus calls us to live as his people, being willing to give up our privilege, being willing to give up our power, being willing to give up our rights, being willing to give up our life for the sake of the world, for the sake of those living in darkness, for the sake of those living in despair, for the sake of those living without love for the sake of those living without the knowledge and the faith in the promises that God makes to us and in the victory that God won for us on the cross and through the empty tomb. We, too, are called to have the same mind as Jesus in this way, to look at the world as Jesus looks at the world, to see people as Jesus sees them, and not as the world encourages us to see them. 
When Jesus looks out and he sees people, he doesn't see problems. He doesn't see enemies. He doesn't see illness. He sees them as they truly are. He sees us as we truly are. So people of God, as we begin this journey through Holy Week, let us begin with a renewed dedication to allowing God to transform our minds and our perceptions of the world around us to match that of Jesus who gave himself for us so that we could have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. In his name, amen. We now enter into a series of prayers, starting with the prayers of intercession. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world, and all nations instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them, that they serve those in greatest need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer especially those on the prayer list of our congregation and those we name now with our lips or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. You called followers to tend Jesus' body and death, sustain hospice, hospice workers and funeral directors, bless this congregation's ministries at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all who offer support in grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times, but especially those within our memorial garden. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and, with them, to look for the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Offerings to the Mission and Ministry of Grace can be made online at gracelw.com. Look for the donate button or by mailing a check to Grace Lutheran Church, 1812 North Highland Avenue, Clearwater, Florida, 33755. You can also fill out an attendance form on our website. If you're new to Grace through our online services, please consider sharing a little bit about yourself through our attendance form. Let us pray. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives, that following in the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray in the language closest to our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now transition from worship to service with the blessing, sending him, and dismissal. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, Chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor, God bless you 
that you may be a blessing. In the name of the Holy and life-giving Trinity, Amen. Together we have heard God's word and joined in prayer. We have given and have been forgiven. Now as the service of worship is ending, this week's service to the world is beginning. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God.